text in a, in a case. You have heard it. So in the future, if someone says to you, that really didn't happen, you have to say to them, I heard someone who lived through it. It is Jewish custom when a member of our family dies, we light a candle on the anniversary of their death. And we do this, and, and by the way, the candle stays lit for 25, well, 24 hours, sometimes 25 hours. The reason for this, and it's a memorial candle, and the reason for this is because we commemorate their entire lifespan. We don't do it on the day they were born, we do it, we do it on the day they die. Their whole lifespan is, memor is memorialized. We don't know when the six million die. So this flame stays lit always, and you are now in the memorial museum. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the word Holocaust is really a Greek word. It means the total destruction through burning, like a sacrifice. This is the year 2011. In the Jewish calendar, we just celebrated a new year. It's the year 5,772. We take the beginning of our calendar from the creation of Adam. Jewish people are an ancient people. We became a people 3,300 years ago when Moses accepted the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Jews were not citizens of the countries that they lived in, not until the middle of the 1800s. So the church would always be the highest ground and oversee the Jewish community, the steeple, the highest point to God. And I think you've all heard of the Nobel Peace Prize and just are recently giving it out in the last few weeks. We have won over 22% of them. Israel alone, I believe, has won almost 12, and they've only been a nation since 1948. They started giving these out in the early 1900s. We contribute incredibly to the world that you live in today. Those of you that are wearing blue jeans, Levi Strauss. Those of you that wear makeup, Helena Rubinstein and Estee Lauder. The banking industry was begun by the Jews. Hollywood started by the Jews. Uh, last night I watched a movie about Houdini. Uh, he, was the father, he was the father of magic. He was a Jew. The three greatest thinkers in the century that you were born in, in the 20th century, were all Jews. Albert Einstein, I think you know about him. Uh, Sigmund Freud, I think you probably know about him too, and Karl Marx, the father of communism. These were all the greatest thinkers of the century that you were born in. They were all Jews. He was the fourth child of the third marriage of his father, who was a customs official, so he really didn't grow up in a very wealthy situation, probably middle or lower middle income. He had aspirations of becoming an artist or an architect, and he could not get into that school, and so he became a high school dropout. He decided to go to Germany to fight World War I, and he became a decorated war hero there. Now, the government wanted him to find out what different political parties were saying, so he liked one of them, the German Workers' Party. He got to be the leader of it and changed its name to the National Social Socialist German Workers' Party. The acronym for this is the Nazi Party. It adopted, this is the symbol, what is it? Everybody? Swastika. Swastika. You all know this for a reason. A swastika is really an ancient symbol. It was found on Greek coins, Buddhist writings, and in the writings of North and South American Indians. In Chinese, believe it or not, it means good luck. The Nazis took it, they turned it on an angle, and in our world, it is the most hated symbol in mankind. That is why you know what it is. You are given a cup of bowl and a string, and you are told, don't lose or you will not eat. You are given this prison uniform, the wooden shoes that you coming can be stealthy. The uniforms, by the way, were generally made of something called bed ticking. They used to uh, cover mattresses in this kind of a fabric in that day and age. In this area, the people are living pretty much one family to a room. So if it's a three-bedroom flat or apartment, you have a family in every room and another family in the living room. You're jammed in. One toilet, one stove. You're being starved to death. The Jews still tried to have a life in here. They had underground schools, underground newspapers, underground religious services. Every day you would go out to work in the slave labor camp. If you're a little kid, you want to steal some food for your family, you're being starved to death in here. So you crawl out through the sewers, and you're looking for bread, that's it. They find you. What do they do? They shoot you, and you're six. The Jews, every single day, must meet a quota of numbers. 
and the numbers are the people that will be shipped off to the concentration camps and gassed. Nazis kept amazing records, and this shows you a flow chart of every country that they would attack, how they would take it over. Everybody, please come close. Maybe we've got about 35, 40 people somewhere around now, you think? 35 anyway. This cattle car would hold 80 to 90 people. Three times our number would be jammed into this car. Are you getting a nice seat? You are not. You are standing squashed next to the person next to you. This cattle car is taking you from your home with your suitcase I spoke of. You are going with your family but you don't know where. And you are going from Greece. It turns out you're going to Auschwitz. Are you on here for a few hours? No, you are not. Could be days, could be weeks. There's no food in here. There's no water in here, and there is no toilet in here. And you don't know where you're going. And the babies are screaming, and the old ladies are crying. And the old lady neighbor of yours is next to you, weeping. And she's so ill, she dies on you. And there's no room for you to move. And for days, she's on you, and she's dead. And finally, you arrive at Auschwitz, and the doors open, and only thing you can think of is to get the heck out of there. And the moment you are squished out, you are separated from your family, and you will never see them again. When you exit, you see vicious barking dogs, people with whips. You see an orchestra playing Wagner. What is that all about? Hitler liked Wagner. He used the Jewish slaves to do that. You, if you are between the ages of 14 and 50, you get to go off to the right. You are stripped naked. You are tattooed. You are given that prison uniform after you are shaved. And you go to the barracks and you wait. Those of us under 14, over 50, sick or pregnant, go off to the left. We are told that we have been on this train for a long time. And by the way, the trains were marked on the outside with Stars of David or Large J. Do you think the people in the cities and the villages knew nothing was going on? They were not bystanders that were innocent. We go to the undressing room. There are 800 or 900 of us taking our clothes off and putting it in a nice neat pile. And we go into the shower chambers because they tell us we've been on that train for so long, we need a shower, we're going to be reunited with our family, given our work detail. So we go in the shower. They lock the doors, they turn <coughs> out the lights. And out of the ceiling comes Zyklon B gas. And it takes us 15 minutes to choke to death because the Nazis won't use enough gas to kill us quickly. And we are now all dead. All of you that got to go off to the right, you all come back. You open the doors. You pull out the bodies. You pick our teeth for gold. And you examine our body cavities, and I don't mean just the mouth, to see if there's any valuables. You take us to the crematoria where they burn our bodies, and the air is filled with the stench and the ashes of us. Every two hours in Auschwitz, this process repeats itself. Now, I want to read you a law that was passed in Germany. Anyone who deliberately offers refuge to Jews or who aids them in any other manner, and that would be offering a night's lodging, offering food, or by taking them into a vehicle of any kind, will be subject to the death penalty. That's what these people risked, and generally not just for themselves, but for those, their loved ones as well. So when somebody helped the Jews, it was a great peril. <laughs>
is because other countries in Europe, before Hitler conquered them, did not want these Jewish refugees. And they made a deal with the Nazi government to identify Jewish people with that red J. I also found my mother's passport. I never found my dad's. And again, you'll see that same red J among all the other stamps. There's stamps on there with the Nazi swastika on them, too. And I also have one picture that I treasure. And this is a picture of my dad and his World War I officer's uniform. And when I look at uh, how proud he was to wear that uniform and how he was repaired, repaid, I should say, for that, uh, for wearing that uniform. So I'll put that up there and you're welcome to take a look at it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what surprised you most about the Holocaust? I don't know. Everything? Everything. <laughs> what surprised me most about the Holocaust is about how many people, like, not just from Germany and Poland, like, died. It was, like, people from, like, Denmark and Africa and all these other continents and countries. I was like, wow. I didn't know. I thought it was, like, from, like, one place everybody kept dying from and stuff like that. So it was nice. The most important thing you learned today? Is to not be a bystander. To be an individual? Yes. Interesting. Love everybody. Don't hate others.